happy Saturday. Today I'm gonna give you a very fabulous, elegant tour of how we live without a kitchen. Are you guys ready? Before we get into this amazing Cribs episode, I wanna say thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring this weekend vlog. It's actually kind of a relief because we have been eating takeout for three weeks now. And your girl is all about her food. And I do love a good taco and pizza and cheeseburger, but after three weeks, you're like, you know what I'm craving? Sacrificing my skills in the kitchen. <laughs> so today we're actually going to attempt a solid grown-up meal outdoors. We're gonna do some steaks, we're gonna cook some zucchini and uh, some corn. I told Parker, I want a solid protein, veggie, and starch. Like, that's all. Just very simple, just a little garlic, salt, and pepper. Do you think we can swing that? So we're gonna attempt it today. But in the meantime, me and my associate are getting breakfast ready for the dogs in our amazing kitchen. Look at that, do you see that? There's a no pants rule in our kitchen on Saturdays, in case you didn't know. So you guys are here on a good filming day. So here is the fabulous tour of our kitchen. I just got new placemats at Crate and Barrel and I'm really excited. This is my lazy Susan. Look, this is evidence of how much takeout we've had. <laughs> Look how pretty these coasters are. We're going for a theme here. Are you guys picking up the vibe? You picking up our vibe? So this is our dining room area. This is our fabulous recycling station. Uh, this is our hydration station. This is the weekend hydration station. And uh, this is the coffee hydration station. Holy mackerel, we got a lot of stations. This is the uh, canine station because she's ready for breakfast. Mer oh. oh, all right, let's follow the chef in his, in his panties. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. This is the this is the extension of the canine station. This is where they lounge. This is where Mern eats with her mouth open. Oh, that's nice, Mern. What a nice. Give us a big chew. <laughs> I love the sound of dogs chewing. Hello, Bumpers. Hi, have you guys noticed our fabulous flooring? So this floor is imported from a place called the Humpa Depot, and it was professionally laid down with these imported pieces of blue painter's tape, um, and we like to keep it as dirty as possible. It's kind of like the vibe we're going for. What else? I forgot to give you in the tour. Oh, this is our um, fabulous dinnerware. So when we're feeling really fancy, we like them all to not match. We did make sure to get compostable straws, which I'm very excited about. I found these on Amazon and they're not like paper straws where they're terrible and you know, you eat them basically. These are really, really good. I'll link them for you. But it's like, it depends on the mood. Like what kind of dinnerware would you like or utensilware? Do you want the clear? Do you want the black? Uh, we also have sparkles. If you're feeling really elegant that day, you could go for the blue. We've got options, you know? It's like you come over to the snack station. No slacking on the job, sir. No slacking on the job. <laughs> so we got uh, our carbs. You know, do you want it in like cracker form or do you want it in, in fruit snack form? We got all the carbs. Chips. I would say these nuts are for my parents visiting because my dad um, is on a special diet, but these are actually Gracie Mae's nuts. Everyone's like, who's Gracie Mae? Oh, you haven't been here long enough. This is our, this is our station. Oh, let me show you guys. I actually have a really fabulous tool. This is a tool that I invented to scare Gracie Mae's predators. So I grab this. This is very expensive, by the way. I grab this, I run out the door and I do this. And then all the predators run away and Gracie Mae gets to eat her food, which she's not there right now. And so that kind of hurts my feelings because, oh, there's a dove. Because they're usually waiting for us in the morning. But maybe, maybe she's doing a Cribs tour at her house, you know? Like, you know, give her a break. So the thing I'm most excited about this morning to show you is how we wash dishes. So stay tuned for a little bit later in this Crib tour. I'm gonna show you how I proceed to remove all this grease because this was the ground beef. How I remove all this ground beef squatting in my backyard. All right, you guys, welcome to my how to remove grease from a Tupperware tutorial. 
So I am currently microwaving my empty container. You need to have a creepy associate behind you in order for this to actually work out. Sorry about the earthquake. So you microwave your greasy container for maybe 30 seconds. It really depends on the size. And then you're gonna take a paper towel. It could be a dirty paper towel because you still gotta wash this. But then you wipe it. You see how all that grease is coming off? You wipe it and you remove the grease. All the grease off the sides. Take your time because you don't want your knuckles to drag in that grease. It's like the worst feeling ever. You know what's the worst feeling ever? This double chin. And then uh, you continue to wipe it, wipe it, wipe it. Do you see all that? Do you see the difference? See the grease on the bottom and then the, the grease on the top? So you're not completely removing the grease. You still have to take it outside. Don't be a cochina. You still have to go outside. You still have to use a Dawn spray. You still gotta use the garden hose. That's my espresso machine. It's a Keurig. Um, <laughs> you get it all into one corner. And then I gotta go walk into the corner over there, but don't look because you'll probably see my butt. We went ahead and wiped the entire bowl. And so what I have in this kitchen is a very fabulous plastic container and that I use as my dirty dish receptacle. And so we get a pile going and once the little container's full, we go out back and we wash them. So in a few minutes, I'll show you how that gets done, but I will need to be wearing pants for that. Also side note, if you guys would like an Invisalign update, uh, I'm now going to proceed to tell you that I'm six weeks in and uh, it's still not my favorite. <laughs> it's actually not as bad as I remember it the first time and I have noticed a significant difference in my snaggle tooth, but the pain is still there. I think I'm just on a really fast timeline of my own doing because I said I wanted a like speedy process. So I change the trays out every Wednesday. So from Wednesday to about maybe Saturday, midday Saturday, I'm in pain. And then come Sunday, I'm pretty much used to it. It just feels a little tense. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm like just putting them in and out real easy. They're, they're not loose, but they're not in super uncomfortable pain. But I'll show you guys later when I don't have my trays in. You can actually see my little weird tooth, the one that was covered but sticking out in the back. He's actually totally naked right now. Like he's just like, my turn, you know, like my turn to shine. So uh, he's waiting for his MTV Cribs tour later. So remind me to show you how I wash dishes and my snaggle tooth. I'll, I, you know, today I'm just in a sharing, showing mood. So just, this is what I'm here for, you know? Still no Gracie Mae. I have some concerns. I have some concerns. Everybody's very late today. Frederick, Nick, Gracie Mae, nowhere to be found. Nick is the best, you guys. Nick is a bunny that gives no about humans. Well, I don't think it's humans, I think it's us. So it'll be 6 a.m. and he is standing in front of this shuttered window looking up at us. And when we come out, you know, like those little wild rabbits, they just like buzz off, like completely scared to run away. He just stays there and looks at us and he's like, I know what's in that bag. You gonna come over here or what? And he just kind of tiptoes away, maybe like a foot away from us. We fill the bowl, he looks up and then he walks back. Like he knows what we're there for. That's the whole point, you know? Yesterday, I almost witnessed a major homicide. So Gracie May was eating on the actual picnic table, and then there was a circle of crows that came around her, and so of course, immediately, I'm Googling, do crows eat squirrels? And they do. And then all of a sudden, behind her, like two feet behind her, like where she doesn't notice, there's a hawk. I was like, what the heck's going on here? Is this a brotherhood? Are they gonna murder? Is she a sacrifice or are they gonna eat her? Either way, it's not happening on, on my time. And so I ran out there with my expensive solo cup weapon and I took care of business. But now Gracie's not here this morning, so I have some concerns. All right, you guys, I'm about to take you on a tour of how we wash dishes. Did she just get in the pool? Yep. <laughs> I guess we get to stay in the backyard. Oh my god, Ernie, it's not even hot right now. Ernesta! Ernesta! You see she's avoiding eye contact? No regrets. No regrets. Oh, ma'am. All right, guys, welcome to our tour of our outdoor kitchen. This is how we wash dishes with a hose. So I'm gonna show you the tools and equipment you're gonna need. Definitely not an airplane to wash these dishes. You're gonna need a drying rack. This is my little margarita jug. If you don't follow me on stories, you're missing out. This was full of mango margarita yesterday. It was kind of life-changing. 
So you're gonna need a drying rack. Depending on the type of stuff you're washing, you may need a brush like this one. This is a bottle brush, but it's actually really good for like water bottles. And then you're gonna need your pile of dirty dishes. This stuff, I didn't wanna believe the hype because it's like all over TikTok, which I don't watch. Do you mind? Thank you. Do you, want to, do you want me to write you up on a Saturday? There'll be two strikes in two days, Parker. You see my eyes? You see his face? So supposedly, the <laughs> whether it's the dogs, the boys, or Parker, there's always, always noise in the background. So supposedly this is all over TikTok. It went viral and I thought it was like, okay, people are just lazy and don't know how to wash dishes with hot water. Because we have no access to hot water when we're outside, how are you gonna cut grease? You know, Dawn's not gonna do it all on its own. And when I talk about Dawn, I mean like this stuff right here. So what I've been doing is I spray the dishes with this guy and I just kind of let them hang out for a little bit. And then I proceed to wash them with just a regular old sponge and Dawn. So it's like a double soap thing and you don't have to you don't need the hot water which can get expensive actually if you think about it you don't need the hot water you don't need the double wash you don't need the double rinse none of that so you just spray with dawn let it rest hang out then wash it rinse it and you're good and it gets to, to dry al fresco you know like nature so it's basically like we're camping in in our house it's it's been it hasn't been my favorite I think of all the things having to eat takeout and not having where to wash dishes has been a little bit of a of a buzz kill. But I don't think I've told you guys this. We have cabinets right now. Mm -hmm. We have cabinets in our kitchen in this moment. Do you want to see? I'll show you later. concludes our how to wash your dishes outside tutorial. I really hope you found it useful. I'll make sure to link all these fabulous products in the description box below. Uh, thank you for your help, sir. That's very, that's very helpful. Definitely appreciate your help. Definitely don't appreciate you getting in the pool. Does she look like she cares? No, she doesn't. She doesn't care at all, actually. She's probably going to get back in right now. Is that how you... Oh! Really? Thank you guys for tuning in to our DIY videos and HDTV-esque content on today's episode of Hatching a Bush. Hatching? Hatcheting. Hatcheting? Hacking. Hacking. This is, uh, this is my landscaper. His name's Parker. There's a no pants rule, but he just doesn't really do what I say. And he's trying to trim my bush. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I asked him if he could make it like a teddy bear or maybe a lion and then I just finally settled for maybe he could make it look like a mushroom just like a smooth little dome but I think we're just we're just gonna take what we can get you know just whatever comes out of this it's 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 gonna be fine something symmetrical <laughs> As long as it's symmetrical and not overgrown. I was telling Parker, I'm like, man, these bushes, these like yellow looking ones, like a chartreuse color, they just seem to grow overnight, like boom. And they have zero shape, which is so bizarre because they were shapely, shapely, shape, shapely. And then all of a sudden they just got, oh, actually it's kind of looking kind of cute right now. Let me a little yeah. smooth it out a little. Uh -huh. This might be a good opportunity for us to buy a chainsaw. It's always a good chance for us to buy a chainsaw. Right? I've always wanted a chainsaw. I've always wanted a chainsaw too. What would I do with it? I don't know, but I have a chainsaw. You don't want to cut her? Why do you want to cut her? Because she will be out of control if we don't. We'll take it over. Oh, alright. We have this cool vine. 
I don't know what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's the name of whatever these flowers are. Do you I see think how it's pretty? A yeah, they do look like honeysuckles. But because she's a vine, she's been growing out this way and she's trying to choke out her palm, which is not okay. So Parker's doing this. How many like plant parents do you think are watching right now going, oh, no! no Don't do it! You can't cut in the morning facing the west with the wind in the direction of the sun on a full moon night. There's like a whole like science to plants and stuff and we don't oh, know any yeah. of it. <laughs> but we can't see our little frogs anymore so that's kind of a devastation. I know you guys like to watch Parker do house stuff. This is the only reason I'm vlogging right now. They're like, oh, thanks for vlogging Parker fixing stuff. You don't understand, Parker. I don't. There is something so attractive about a man like washing dishes or don't worry, I already emptied out the dryer. Or I noticed your car was low on gas, so I filled it for you. It's very attractive. Oh, I thought you were going to cut those flowers off. Whew. You know what we find really attractive? No talking. <laughs> Silence. Lack of nagging. It's oh. Like, and I say, hey, babe, what you want for dinner? And you know, like right then, you say, I want this. That's very attractive. You like that. Well, then you must be always attracted to me because I always decide what we're going to eat. Well, I married you, didn't I? <laughs> Yesterday? No, on Thursday. He's like, do you feel like eating something, I don't know, fun today? And I was like, like in and out. <laughs> And then we, and then we compromised and had In-N-Out. In-N-Out's not fun. In-N-Out's like therapy. It's like therapy yeah. food. If Danny asks for In-N-Out, Danny's five seconds before a crisis. <laughs> we averted the crisis, guys. Don't worry. Are you standing back to see if it? What is happening right now? What is this? Look at this, you guys. No, you almost pushed me. <laughs> what is this right now? Do you want to share? Your diagnosis with our pandas? Are you ready to talk about it yet? Hmm? You ready to talk about it? We just want to sweep it under the rug like mommy likes to do most things. <laughs> hmm? You want to tell your pandas what's happening with you right now? You want to take a nap and enjoy your life? I go to be fixed. Me double be fixed. Mana mi cosita chiquita. Angelito del cielo be fixed. Mana mi cosa be fixed. Yo te amo, papito. Mami te quiere mucho. Sí, es mi angelito perfecto. Mala mi cosa de toda mi vida. Oh, I love you. Do you guys remember I told you um, he's had secondary pulmonary edema, which means fluid in his lungs, because of his heart murmur. And so his heart is very enlarged and it kind of collects water in his lungs. And so it's gotten so bad they had to put him on a diuretic. But you guys know you can't be on a diuretic for so long because it makes your kidneys very sick. And we just thought we were buying us a lot of time. We're like, hey, he's never been on a diuretic before, so we're gonna buy us a good amount of time. I mean, he's already 16. Like, any time we can buy ourselves is enough time. Well, turns out that the diuretic already is making one of his kidneys not function. So we're down to one. And so it's only a matter of time before, you know, either his heart or his kidneys give us a really, really hard time. So we're just kind of letting him cruise, coast, be happy. He's super happy. He's so energetic. He jumps around like a kangaroo all day long. That he does not miss a meal and he doesn't miss the opportunity to eat another one of his sister's or brother's meals. <laughs> you know, we're just gonna make sure he's happy and make sure he's comfortable. And when he's not, he'll let us know and, and we'll decide whatever we need to. But in the meantime, he just likes to give us a little scare here or there. But hey, listen, a lot of people live in this world with just one kidney, Bubba. Right, Bubba? That's right. Give me a little, just give me a little action. Just a little action shot. No? How about this action shot? Right there. Yeah. Meow. 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 Oh. 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 Oh, that's nice. What a nice. <laughs> it's pretty. 
Hey kids, welcome back to Cooking Without a Kitchen. On today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to not cook on the inside of your house. In the inside of your house? Inside of your house? Listen, we got a two burner electrical little stove top. We got a electrical two burner cooktop. I think that's how you say it. You guys hear the cicadas? Welcome to summer in Texas. It basically sounds like they're having a turf war. They go from tree to tree to tree to tree. Do you hear that? If I were to take you guys outside, you would actually hear how incredibly loud they are. They're very powerful. They just look like giant, 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 really fat, really ugly butterflies crunchy robotic looking butterflies <laughs> if you've never seen a cicada before we got that little burner that you see behind me which is currently cooking the dog's food but we have to prep dinner for the grown-ups it has been super hard and i have had two failed attempts at cooking dinner for the family with that cooktop i finally just gave up i was like listen this is just not that's just not going to happen for us but today i was like hey parker what if you it's so hard to cut without a cutting board. Like I take all of my spoiled tools for granted. So I'm like, I have to do this so I could like really get in there and hold the knife when you're really supposed to do, you know, the safe way. But man, don't take your kitchen for granted. I don't care how little it is, how uncomfortable it is, how little storage it has. You take it for granted and then you don't have running water and you're like, I'll never do it again, you know? So anyway, I told Parker, I was like, you know what? Today, we're gonna grill. That's what's happening. We're gonna grill outside. There's no need to fight with our little electrical burner. Electric burner? I don't know why I wanna keep saying electrical. So I'm slicing pretty thick slices, about half an inch thick for zucchini. I want it thick so that it can withstand the dry heat of the grill. So when you take one zucchini, you slice it either in third or in fourths, depending on how small or how large it is. What do you got going on over there? Hmm? And so we are going to slice our zucchini just like that. I'm gonna season it with just salt and pepper, a little oil. And now we got to cut our steaks or rather open our steaks, which brings us to our next segment, which is sponsored by ButcherBox. You guys know we are fans of ButcherBox through and through. Being a family of six, it gets hard to feed everyone. It gets hard to find something that everyone likes, and it also gets very expensive. We get the majority of our groceries delivered, milk, eggs, fruit snacks, chips, bread, deli meats, things like that we get delivered. But when it comes down to our steaks and things like that, it's really important for us to be able to see it firsthand. And since we don't go grocery shopping, we trust a brand like ButcherBox be able to send us the best, most freshest cuts of beef, especially to our doorstep. So if you guys are unfamiliar with ButcherBox, they are a subscription service where you can pick from five boxes. So there are four curated boxes, which means you don't have to think about it. It already comes built for you. Or you could do the build your own box, which is what we do. And when we do the build your own box, I'll show you an example of what I did last time I ordered. It comes in a 100% recyclable box Everything is frozen at the peak of freshness. It's all individually wrapped, so it's easy to defrost. All of the beef is 100% grass-fed. The chicken is organic. The pork is cage-free. And the seafood, which is the most impressive for me, is wild-caught. Nowadays, you go to the grocery store and everything is farm-raised when it comes to seafood. So it's just a big, giant, like, aquarium full of whatever salmon or lobster you're gonna do and so it's really refreshing to find out that they are helping out local farmers and wild caught seafood and so you're basically getting farm to table freshness which is wonderful and the best part is that when it comes to like us we need the flexibility sometimes it's just Parker and I sometimes it's Parker me and the boys, other times it's all six of us. So our family size can range from two to six in a matter of days. And so we have to be prepared. So, you know, it's just me and Parker. Okay, like today, we're just frosting a bunch of steaks. We're gonna grill them outside. We don't have to be worried about what we're gonna eat or how we're gonna feed or what time or anything because everything's individually wrapped. Everything is individually packed. 
So when I get this, I'm like, okay, Parker, uh, do you need one steak? Do you need two? Are you gonna need to make your lunches? So we're taking advantage right now and we're gonna cook extras so that he could take and pack in his like meal prep for lunch. And so it's super handy. My favorite cut is always the sirloin. I love it because it comes in small steaks like this. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to eat an entire steak and it's a really, really, really good size. Very juicy, very tender and low fat. Parker's favorite, guys, am I right? Parker's favorite is the ribeye and it looks like this and you can see the amazing marbling it has. And he's a big fan of marbling. He loves sinew and steak. He does love like a New York strip. But anytime that we talk about butcher box here on the channel, there's always a really cool promo attached to it. And while I tell you about that promo, I'm going to season these steaks. But of course I got to open them first. I do not recommend you opening these packages with a knife, you guys. I always recommend that you buy a really good pair of kitchen shears, but I am using a knife at the moment because our kitchen situation. So right now, you know what? We're doing miracles. So I'm gonna take out one of these steaks and I always like to kind of just pat it dry just a little bit so it's not too juicy when I put it on whatever plate, transfer plate I'm using. And so right now what ButcherBox is offering you guys, which is kind of cool, I've actually never had the opportunity to give you guys this promotion, but it's the free surf and turf. So if you guys are new members to ButcherBox and you haven't tried it before, I'll have a link in the description box below. If you use that link in the description box below, you will get two free ribeyes, which here is a demonstration. You're gonna get two free ribeyes and two lobster tails. So you're gonna get two wild caught lobster tails and two 100% grass fed beef ribeyes. So you're gonna be able to do a little date night at home, a little surf and turf, which is really cool. When it comes to steaks, I guess I could give you guys a few little tips since we're doing this right now. When it comes to steaks, the best way to cook a steak is with dry heat. That means in a saute pan, in a grill pan, on an actual grill. So anytime that you have dry heat is the best kind of way to cook a steak because you don't want it, you don't want it to get gray, you want it to get a good sear on it. And the way to get a good sear is with dry heat. Well, hello, Mern. Another tip that I can give you guys is to always cook steak at room temperature if possible, never from cold. If you're on a time crunch, okay, well you can make the exception, but if you wanna perfectly cook steak, always cook it at room temperature. And then the other tip that I can give you guys just off the top of my head that really improved my steak cooking game is to season it in advance. I've found that when I season my steaks in advance, salt, pepper, everything, and then wait a little while, maybe wait till they come up to room temperature and then I grill them, they're a lot juicier. It seems almost like the flavor has actually penetrated into the meat and it's a lot more flavorful and they're definitely a lot juicier. So I haven't had bad luck with seasoning them in advance. So anyway, I'm gonna season these steaks with some salt and pepper, keeping it super simple, and then we're gonna cook them outside. But if you guys want the flexibility, the affordability, you know, the freshness of ButcherBox, you've been meaning to try it out, I'll have all the information linked in the description box below. Don't forget, if you guys sign up now, I'll leave the date range because the promo does expire pretty quickly. So if you guys wanna try the two free ribeyes and the two free lobster tails and do a little surf and turf at home, all that information will be listed in the description box below. I gotta season this stuff, we gotta cook it, and I'm actually making the dog food behind me on the crappy little burners we have. I'll tell you what, you guys. One, my favorite way to season a steak, and I know you guys are gonna say I'm such a simple Sally, but fresh cracked pepper makes a big difference. Not the pre-cracked, fresh cracked pepper has so much more flavor than the pre-cracked stuff that comes in like the tin. And a good garlic salt. I just love garlic salt. I think if I could only pick one thing to season or flavor my food with for the rest of my life, it would certainly be garlic salt. It is just so good. It's not super garlicky, it just adds this very beautiful, salty, umami taste to anything you put it in. Anywhere from like carrots to rice, and any legume and proteins. So I, I keep it simple.
super simple. When I'm feeling a little lazy, I don't even flip my steak and season both sides because I told you if you season early enough, it just kind of hangs out and it goes all into the meat and it's like super delicious and juicy. When it comes to my veggies, however, I do like to douse them in either avocado oil or um, butter. <laughs> But we can't use butter on a grill because it'll burn in like a hot second. So what was the other thing I was telling you? Fresh cracked pepper and garlic salt, best way to season steak. And the other thing was like, I will never, I promise you guys, I will never take running water for granted again. Like I never thought, I just never factored in that I would be washing dishes on the floor in the backyard next to the pool it's very bizarre you know and i'm like why did why did i ever think like i'm so lucky to have a sink you know i'm so lucky to have running water you don't think about those things it's not something that ever crosses your mind oh yeah i'm so lucky i have a toilet because that's not the case in every part of the world it really isn't so it's like now i'm like oh man i'm so lucky that i have a sink we're so lucky that we have we even have the space to be redoing a kitchen, you know? I promise I'll never take my kitchen for granted. And I am so hyped up to get back to cooking videos because I feel like that's where, that's where my heart's always been is like teaching people how to feed themselves, teaching people how to feed their families. So I'm gonna finish, well, I'm not really doing anything in here, right? We're just gonna take this outside and we're gonna cook it on the grill and I'll show you guys the final product. But if you guys were on the fence for Butcher Box, all the information will be listed down below. Two free ribeyes, two free lobster tails. Have yourself some surf and turf. Doesn't that just sound like the perfect summer meal for like a date, like a date night at home? Surf and turf, kind of cool, right? And then like a Netflix marathon. We just got onto the show. Ah. Uh, just justification just just justified just justified justified we just got turned on to the show justified by emily noel here on youtube so far so good i kind of really like it i'm really enjoying the whole marlboro man cowboy hat like very serious about his you know u.s marshal duties so if you guys like those kind of like cop shows marshal shows or whatever i think you might enjoy it and the best part is it's on hulu and there's like six or seven seasons. So it's a good, oh, hello. It's a good show to start if you have been lacking your go-to show. Like Parker and I will always latch on to something and then keep it going. And we always hope that it's a season that has a lot of seasons so that we don't have to pester our television searching and searching and searching and not, you know, finding anything good. So Justified on Hulu, so far so good. We're like half, half of season one in and I like it. I haven't seen anything yet that would say, oh, maybe I don't want to commit to this. So, so far, so good. If you guys have seen it, let us know in the comment section below, but I'm gonna take this outside to Parker and then let him do his magic. I have no idea what he does with the green egg. It makes things taste good, and I just let him do it. I just know it takes him like seven hours. <laughs> are about to see something real ridiculous. How many girls do you think is enough for a man? Like one, maybe? Or two? You know, some guys like the gas, some like the charcoal, but sometimes, sometimes, sometimes one girl isn't enough, you know? Sometimes you gotta have you gotta have the gas grill going. You gotta have the big fatty. And you also gotta have the little one. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm in heaven. <laughs> Three girls! Not two! Not one! Three. Trois. Hey, well, all my toys. All my toys. You guys should get the smell out here. Like, there's no smell-o-vision.
I smell like a grill right now. You know what's gonna be amazing later though? The grilled stuff in my mouth. Apparently he has a whole smorgasbord of planning he's doing right now. Oh, apparently it's, it's happy hour too. And I wasn't invited. Every hour is happy hour. Is happy I'm inside, hour. slaving in my kitchen. That, we all know that's a lie. <laughs> And this man is out here with three girls and a beer. Or as Parker would say, a burr. You know what, Parker? I'm gonna throw you in the pool. You can try. Do you have like a good low center of gravity? I don't know, you've been working out, so. They got you scared, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I am an athlete. You're an athlete. So, look at this obnoxious person. Look at that. This is why you should fill out our online friend application. Yeah. We cook for you. You gotta, or you gotta deal with this. <laughs> it depends on how you see it. The other day I was rearranging my studio and I was feeling so blessed. I was like, you know what? Man, I feel so good. I have my own room in this house. I'm so lucky. You know, the kids have their own bedroom, but I have a bedroom too. Then I have my office and then I'm like redecorating my studio, which is like Danny, do you hear the cicadas that I had mentioned? Turf war. And uh, I was like, hey, I'm feeling so lucky. I have my own room and it's beautiful and I can put whatever I want in here. And all the kids, all of them, girls and boys, no, they're not allowed in there. And then I was like, why do I get this whole room, you know? What does Parker get? Well, now I know. Nine girls, the garage. Oh, sorry, you're missing the... Apparently, the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom. I feel like you need like a war cry or something right now. The smell is enough. <laughs> the smell's enough. That is enough. It's gonna be really good though. And it's like perfect grilling weather. Yes, yeah, great day to grill. Perfect grilling weather. Nice and quiet, we can cook exactly the way we wanna cook. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. It's good, it's good. So speaking of rearranging my office, sorry about the lighting. Let me show you what we did. Okay, actually, let me give you a, that's my kitchen. <laughs> See the containment? See how amazing it is? Y'all, I don't wanna brag, but the containment is still a problem. <laughs> All right, Sophia, let's give them the tour. So this is a little hallway to our bedroom. And so when you walk through this little hallway, Danny and Parker greet you. And it's kind of like a sign of saying, hey, you're approaching the master bedroom, so be careful. And we have a half bath here, and this is our bedroom. And usually these tor doors were closed because it was my studio and I just, you know, I like it closed off. I don't want be to be like always exposed to what I do for work. It's like always being around your work. But the other day I was feeling like big lack of motivation. I just felt stale. So I tinkered in here and I moved everything around and I'm so happy. Does this remind anybody of anything? Like anybody? Anybody that's been here for nine years? I cornered myself just like I did in the beginning and I feel at home. It is such a weird feeling. It just feels comfortable again. So I just feel like my tank has just gotten refilled. It feels cool to have a new perspective, like a new little setup. I'm super happy with it so far. I haven't actually taken it for a spin, but I love the flow that it's given the whole house. So now we can actually keep these two doors open and it creates such a big, nice flow from here to the bedroom. So this whole area went from feeling really micro to feeling a lot bigger and a lot more open. So kind of digging that. But you know what I'm also digging? Uh, these steaks, and I think Parker's waiting for me to throw them on the grill, so look at that. It's a little steak for Papa. You're such a good girl, I am so proud of you. She has been sitting there next to this and has not even approached it. You are the best princess in the whole world. Yes, you are. What a good girl. Oh, I love you, mama. I do, my selfie girl. This is what this is what my wife is doing while I'm outside cooking, slaving in the heat. 
you know, doing what I got to do. Sitting here just, just Instagramming and, you know, looking at dog videos with her four dogs. <clears throat> Dogging it up. Is there, could there ever be enough dog? Oh, Myrn, what do you think? It's weird, right? It is weird. You want to come out here with me? Come on. It's getting weird in there. Go away! It's not fair. It's not fair. In there, AC. Nice and cold. Probably nice. 70, 71, 72 degrees. Me out here, it's hot. It's hot. It's really hot, slaving over these grills. This isn't easy. This man's work though, you know, ladies. Hmm. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. All right guys, I just wanna show you what I'm doing out here. Got a few things going at the same time using three grills, but trying to optimize uh, the usefulness of all three, uh, depending on their quality. So let's talk about the eggs first. So got the corn going on the small egg, which is a nice concentrated heat. It's gonna come up roast it really well. Now we're going to use the extra large egg for the steaks. And I don't know if you can see down there, but I've actually split the firebox. So I'm going to have some intense heat in the back and a little bit cooler in the front. That way I can move the steaks back and forth, get the perfect char and the perfect temperature at the same time. Now the corn takes a little bit to cook. So I got the steaks and our veggies on standby to uh, put them on whenever the steaks get close to ready. Now, they're gonna get finished probably really fast, and we wanna keep the corn warm. So, I moved over here to the gas grill, and I've got it on low. Each side burner's on low. So this is actually gonna be like a warming bin for the corn and the rest of our veggies while we're doing the steaks. So everything comes out just right. And this is how you can tell how long I've been cooking. I mean, three beers in. So we're about about an hour, 15 minutes. But in another 20, 30, we're gonna be done. All right, so we're almost ready for the steaks. I just wanted to show you how amazing these Butcher Box steaks are. Butcher Box, to your door. I mean, ready to go. Ready to go on the grill. They're fresh, they're packaged perfectly, vacuum sealed. You really can't beat it. To have it delivered straight to your door is phenomenal. I just wanted to show you these before we put them on the grill. Look how pretty those are. Ready to go. Oh, it's a topo steak. They're on the side. Just in size. Let's do this. All right. It's time to turn the corn. What we're doing is we've soaked the corn in water for a few hours to get a lot of water infused in there. So we put it on the grill. The heat is going to act like uh, a catalyst to, to burn the water, turn it into steam. So we're just kind of steaming the corn and that water that's trapped by the husks. So the water's gonna cook it, and then toward the end, the water's gonna go away, and then you're gonna get that nice flavor from the smoke and the natural wood that's cooking them. Let's check on and see how they're doing. Now see, this is perfect. They're kind of like the, the husks are starting to burn away, which means that the moisture is being exhausted. It's been turned into steam to cook the kernels. And now we're getting to the point where the kernels are gonna to start to roast. You're gonna to start to turn that beautiful golden and black. So you just let this stuff fall away. Just kind of gently massage it. And we're gonna have some beautiful roasted corn. All right guys, it's corn time. As you can see, Danny's still nice and cool inside. Enjoying that AC. It's about 98 degrees out there. Let's check on this corn and see what's going on. Here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that beautiful color. It's starting to come out. The kernels are starting to brown. Just beautiful. I'm just going to give it a massage. A couple of this last bit of husk. I can feel the heat coming through the kernels in my hand. That is beautiful.
for my mate you know that I'm is. gonna eat. I just, I'm not going anywhere with this. In your mouth. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm digging my grave deeper and deeper. I reached the earth's core already. <laughs> You're there. Yeah. You're a max depth. <laughs> this guy, he's a little limp. Poor little, poor little fella. All right. Do you guys hear that? That's our containment. <laughs> the pandas are familiar. With our containment, how amazing, just how amazing your containment is. It's just, it's the best. She made this whole experience just amazing, you know, the containment. Amazing. Or lack thereof. Someone saw one of the videos that I posted when I was like, we have paint. And I'm like trying to count our victories as opposed to complain. Mm -hmm. And she's like, your poor washer and dryer. And I was like, I don't want, I'm not ready to talk about it right now. You know, they worked so hard for us and they just got dumped on. You know, no respect. Look at them. this. Poor Can guys. I help you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, you ready for your baby steak? You guys have to wait. If you're good during dinner, then you can have a piece. And if you guys are good during dinner, I'll show you a clip of Sophia eating corn on the cob. There's actually a vlog already up where she eats corn on the cob. It's really funny because she leaves the cob. <laughs> she holds it and plucks off all the corn. Well, she knows exactly what to do. She knows it's corn on the cob. She's like, I'm just, I mean, what? I'm not gonna sit here. It's like, y'all don't eat this on a regular basis? Because I do. <laughs> like, she's an expert. Like, yeah, like she knows what's up. <laughs> she doesn't eat corn on the cob. All right, so we're doing this. I actually dug through our big gray bins behind us just to find steak knives. So one, of the hilarious things about Parker. Parker's like one of those guys that's like, he'll eat anything, he'll go anywhere, he'll, he loves anything you gift him. He, he's just not difficult at all. He's like your dream child, you know? Like when you have two kids and then one's like, everything's the worst and everything's the, he's just easy. One of the things he just will not tolerate. <laughs> this is the first Triggered. time. Triggered. <laughs> In what, three weeks? That you hold I've held a real <laughs> utensil. It feels like really heavy. <laughs> I'm so used to plastic. I never see him triggered. Were they always this Ever. heavy? Ever, yes. But when he uses plastic wear, he's, he's, he is not Parker. <laughs> it's really funny, because I'm like, you know, we all have our things, but most of us have like 90 things. Parker has like two. Oh man, my knife went right through that. Wow. Oh yeah. He's a ribeye guy. I just can't, I just can't get behind the ribeye thing. My oh, dad oh, loves oh. ribeye. Oh, he can't have ribeye anymore. Oh, wow. Don't talk about ribeye tomorrow. Okay, I promise. Okay. I want to tell you how. I like these little ones. Mmm. They're always just perfect. What do you think? They're good every time. <laughs> every time. I'm mm -hmm. like, they're going to get the free ribeyes. So you got to be honest. We don't want to send them down a bad, a bad um, route. Don't hesitate, these are delicious. <laughs> and they get two free lobster tails too. What? They're in the freezer. I didn't know about that. You know <laughs> lobster tails a little should bit? I, should I have said that? I'm holding out. I'm holding out on him. This could, isn't a marriage. I could be surfing and turfing on <laughs> That's the promo. Free surf oh. and turf. Well, <laughs> Lack of transparency in our marriage. Are you triggered? Oh, we're going to counseling over this one. It's going to be a hot topic. Serventer! How long have lobster tails been in my freezer and I didn't know about it? <laughs> well, that's more about you than it is about me. <laughs> if you didn't know it was in your freezer, because you know where it is? It's right next to your halo top. Oh, see, I haven't touched a halo top in a while. <laughs> trying to get all, trying to get all fit for Mexico. Sexy for Mexico? It's not going well. <laughs> Fighting all this. <laughs> We're going to have dinner, watch a little more of Justified. I'm pretty sure I told you the name of the show wrong earlier. I think I said Justification. <laughs> Justified, justified. We're gonna watch more of that. We're gonna enjoy this. But if you guys want to check out the promo with Butcher Box, two free ribeyes, two lobster tails, please show your husband the lobster tails in advance. Like, don't hold out. This steak is so good. It's so <laughs> tender, juicy. It came to our doorstep. You know what would make it better? Just a little bit better? Don't say a one sauce because I will. A lobster fly tail. Oh. <laughs> Next to the link is in the description box. I gotta go recover 
what uh, the damage I've done in this marriage. I gotta repair the trust. My weekend is gone. <laughs> Hey you guys, happy Sunday from me and my mop. So I have just been hanging out with the boys. They got here this morning and it is almost two o'clock. We're actually killing time. Wow, my hair looks astonishingly puffy today. Um, oh, wow, we're doing that, huh? <laughs> we're doing that. So we have just been killing time. We have to leave at three to pick up my parents. They'll be here until Wednesday. Tuesday's my dad's birthday, so we're just kind of kind of moseying around our day. It's a very, very, very challenging day for me because Parker snored all night. I mean, all night. And usually he's so good about it where I'll just kind of fuss. So like if he's snoring, I just kind of like tap him on his pillow. Like I just, I don't even smack the pillow or smack him. I just like put my hand next to his pillow and just nudge it and he stops or he immediately gets up and goes to the couch. So he's like mortified that he snores so bad. Like he, he, he hates it, he hates that uh, it interrupts my sleep, he feels guilty, like he's a good guy, you know? <laughs> he's not nefariously snoring. And so we found a common denominator with his snoring and I just mean the severity of it. He usually snores every night, but usually it's tolerable. On the days where it actually interrupts my sleep, it's usually when he has any kind of alcohol. It could be one beer and he snores like a semi truck whose air brakes are going out and he's going downhill. Like it is absolutely horrendous. So he had, I think two beers yesterday, maybe. I had a hard kombucha, like it was, it was a Saturday, it was just the two of us, so we were relaxing at home, you know? So the man has three beers and I murdered him last night. No, <laughs> so he has three beers and he usually gets up. I nudged him, I nudged him, I nudged him, I slammed my pillow, I got up, I like, <clears throat> you know when you do the whole like heavy, like the rage sigh, like I rage sighed a few times. He wouldn't move, he wouldn't get up, he wouldn't stop. So finally, I grab my pillow, and the minute he senses I'm walking out of that room, it's like he's triggered. He's like, oh no, my codependency, where is she going, you know? <laughs> so he's like, no, I'll go to the couch. And I'm like, you know, you got to enjoy your beers, now I can't sleep. Peace out, Cub Scout. So I went upstairs, the couch upstairs is like really comfortable, so I went upstairs, fell asleep on the couch and he's actually working all day today. He's doing an escort. So that sounded weird, but law enforcement, you know what's up. So he's doing an escort today all day. He won't be home until like eight o'clock. So it's just me and the boys gonna pick up my parents. But before we get out the door, I wanna show you two things, maybe three things. The first thing is a deodorant that I've been meaning to try. So I follow this body positivity, publicist, publisher, uh, author account. I'll link it in the description box because I absolutely love her account, but I can't pronounce her name. I think it's Danae, or maybe it's Dana, I don't know. But her account is phenomenal. And she lives in Europe, I believe, or moved to Europe. She used to live in Dubai, she moved to Italy. I don't know why this is all relevant, but I'm just giving you like a backstory. And so she is an ambassador for a deodorant brand called Wild. It looks like this. And so I was actually trying to order it when she was promoting it, but it was European shipping. And I think it was gonna be more for me to ship it than the actual price of the deodorant. And then I started to see a lot of American influencers Did you hear that? And then I started to see a lot of American influencers talk about it. So most recently, Leanne, Leanne says, did a sponsored post for them. And I was like, this is it. It's already in America. I'm gonna get a discount. I'm gonna try it out. So it is an all natural, compostable, refillable, safe for sensitive skin, uh, cruelty free, et cetera, et cetera. I'll list all the claims down below. Deodorant. And it actually has become my favorite really quickly. So you guys know Native is my favorite. Sol de Janeiro is really good. I tried it recently, I fell in love with it. It didn't hold up during Pilates. So that for me is not a deal breaker because I don't do Pilates every day, but it's one of those things where if I'm gonna need that, I'm gonna need a backup, or if I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna need to reapply. 
I'm kind of over that whole re reapplication life, but I'll say this, if you guys are transitioning into the all natural deodorant world, aside from the whole adjustment process, which they say could take up to like two to four weeks, you, you generally have to reapply, except for Lumi. Lumi worked for me, but I didn't like the way it felt on my skin. So usually you have to reapply, and you have to reapply when you're out in the sun, when you're working out, when you're sweaty. I generally have to reapply with Native. I can't go 24 hours with Native if I'm outside at any given moment, because right now in Texas, it's 90, like 95 degrees. So yesterday we were outside barbecuing and doing all that stuff. I know Parker roasted me that I was sitting on the couch, but listen, if I'm gonna prep, you're gonna cook. If you're gonna cook, I'm gonna prep kind of thing, you know, like <laughs> teamwork on the weekends and we don't have to feed children. Usually when we have to feed children, it's all on me. I have to take care of it. I do the grocery shopping, I do the prep, I do the cooking, I do the cleaning, I do everything. When it's just the two of us, I'm like, at the very least, you can help, you know? We were outside and it was 92, 93 degrees plus the grill, the smoke. It was super, super, super humid and hot. I didn't have to reapply, like at all whatsoever. It still left me feeling clean, dry. It's not an antiperspirant, so it's not gonna make you not sweat. It's just gonna keep you fresh. Really, really loving it. I got three scents, cotton something, bergamot something, and the watermelon crush which watermelon is limited edition, which I'm kind of upset I didn't get more of because it is divine. Like, I never thought I would want to have watermelon in my in my armpits. Never thought I, would, I was gonna have watermelon in my armpits, but here we are and I super recommend it. The other thing I was gonna tell you is, can we talk about this? I totally, completely, absolutely forgot about one of the best products for people with wavy to curly hair, no matter if your hair is coarse, fine like mine, thin, you have a little bit of it, you have a lot of it. I absolutely 100% forgot about how awesome this product is. So this is from Briogeo, it's the Curl Charisma. It's like a, it's like a curl defining cream. Your hair isn't crunchy, I'll show you guys. It defines the curls, but it's not crunchy. It looks a little crunchy, but that depends on how much product you use. You guys know how I am, I have a heavy hand with everything. And so if I use a little bit less, it's not as crunchy looking, but it's soft to the touch. So I got that sample and I was like, I'm gonna save this because I can't remember how much I love this. I remember I used to use it back in the day. I forgot about it. Then when it arrived, I was like, I used to love this stuff. But you guys know with time over time, as we get older, our hair changes, our skin changes. So I was like, I wonder if it'll still work the same. Oh, and here's the other thing. Brands change their formula of their products all the time and they don't always announce it. Like Sol de Janeiro changed the formula of their Brazilian foreplay, the body wash. They completely changed the formula. Didn't tell a soul. <laughs> At least to my knowledge, like I have tried to find out if they made an announcement. I can't find any information on that and they changed the body wash. So they're not obligated to share a formulation change. So anyway, I was like, well, do I still love it? Am I still gonna love it? Am I gonna love it with this hair length? Let's just try it out and see what happens. And isn't that cool? I'm like super happy with it. I might have to swing by a Sephora while my parents are here and be like, I need some cruel charisma cream. You know what I mean? Okay, and what was the other thing I was gonna show you? I was gonna show you something else. Oh, I remember. But I need your honest opinion. This is where you guys come in. Okay, wait for it. Just, sorry, okay, well, there we go. What do we think about my new purse? Honest feedback. I mean, honest, like this, actually, let me turn the light on. Hold on, there's a close-up of it. You're welcome. Okay, so, what do we think? So, this is a bag that reminded me of the Henry Bendel Jet Setter backpack, which was a super hit, but then Henry Bendel went out of business and you can't find them anywhere anymore. And seeing as I'm not a black bag person, I was looking for something that was more of a warm tone, maybe something brown, caramelly. I found this guy, and so there's a top handle, there's the removable shoulder strap, like that, sorry about the terrible angle I'm giving you guys. And then there's also a backpack strap. Well, there's two, I'm just showing you one right now. But this is the way the bag looks. This is the back, 
This is the front. It has a zipper in the front and it has two side pockets. So I'm holding off one pocket for my phone, the other pocket for my other number one essential now that I have Invisalign. This guy has saved my lips, you guys. My only complaint about this bag is that the zipper is in the back. So if I wanna get in here, I gotta move the straps out of the way and then I have to open it this way. But it's a very easy zipper to use. You, could, you just saw how buttery it was. Once you open it on the inside, you probably can't tell, but there is a zipper and a pocket. So there's a zipper across the top and then there's a pocket and then a big giant for everything else. So I got my wallet, my little bag, and that's what the bag looks like. I do have to say, I'm super excited that the straps are so adjustable because it's tall and short people friendly. I love that the hardware is gold because I'm not a fan of silver jewelry or silver hardware. I always like gold. The only thing that I think I'm gonna run into is because it's such an affordable brand, I'm pretty sure the gold is not gonna stay gold very long or it's gonna have that metallic sort of like iron, like that iron smell to it when you rub it. But so far, I mean, I just got it a few days ago. I've been kind of taking it for a spin. I'm very rough with my things, so I'm always very hesitant to buy bags that are plastic. This is a PU leather, like it's not leather, it's plastic. So this is polyurethane material, so it is plastic, but I thought it was cute, maybe as a diaper bag or like a taking the kids to the park. I mean, I would use it as my everyday bag, but if you guys are doing a lot of travel this summer or maybe uh, flights or amusement parks, it's a really good size. And I know this is a very stupid detail, but look how cute it looks in the front. <laughs> I mean, I know that's dumb, like that is trivial, it's not important, but look, it looks cute, a little gold, gold hardware in the front. All right, there we go. There's a double back shot, isn't that cute? I think I love it. It actually comes in probably like 20 different colors. I got it as a lightning deal for $25. Regularly, they're 45. So I would say even if you didn't get the lightning deal, it's still a fair price for such a cool bag. But like I said, it is not brass and it's not leather. So it's polyurethane and I can't even, I don't even know what these are, just metal. <laughs> but I wanted to show that to you guys. So we are gonna head out the door. I'm wearing the Levi's I told you guys about, the rib cage that I got during Prime Deals, Prime Days for Amazon. Same little twist knot crop top, again, from Amazon. I think this is $16. I have it in like four colors, you guys. But it's two o'clock and we are going to head out the door probably in the next 30 minutes and pick up my folks. My dad's coming this time. He was really, really excited to see the boys. When my mom came last time, he was like, uh, can I come next time? So I planned a trip for them to come back, what, like three or four weeks after my mom has just come. So yeah, tomorrow we actually have a super fun day. We're gonna go to Bucky's. <laughs> so Mateo got an expander, super uncomfortable, poor little guy. He's talking so silly, almost like I am. And uh, he's just, it's taken him a bit to adjust. And I asked him, I was like, oh, my buddy, what do you want to do to, I don't know, cheer you up? And he's like, I want to go to Bucky's. And I was like, you want, you want to go to, to a gas station? You know what? I'm your mom and I support this. <laughs> so tomorrow we're going to go to Bucky's. <laughs> All right, y'all, so this is the status of our life. It is 3.30. My parents landed 30 minutes ago, I have and I was just having, like, a baby rant with the kids. I was like, man, you know, they're here for, like, a day. Why can't they just carry on their bags? Isn't that what we're talking about? Yeah. Be rude again and see what happens. No, I'm talking about your parents. Well, that's rude, too. Oh. Those are grown-ups. I was telling the kids, I'm like, if they're going to be here for what? Let's see. Sunday? Monday, Tuesday. They're gonna be here for three nights. They leave Wednesday at lunchtime. They arrive today at dinner time. I'm like, you carry on a bag, right? You're not even gonna be here for that long. Plus, my mom's left all her stuff here, like her hair dryer, all that stuff. We have it here. But they always check bags. No matter if they're here for two days, they always check bags. So we end up having to wait for them forever. It always seems like it's forever and a half. So we got here at three, it's already 3.35 and nothing, 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 nothing. I'm, I'm like, what the heck? 
And Daniel's like, well, Mom, it's obviously because Abuela carries scissors and guns in her suitcase. And, and, then, it, and then someone goes to YG like, I'm shutting this down, cuts. And then, get on your parachute. And then someone does that. No, Daniel! So, yeah, we're just here waiting and waiting and waiting. I, I, I intentionally left the house late. I was like, you know what? It's rather they wait outside just a little bit, like 10, 15 minutes, than I wait in the car with antsy kids 10 or 15 minutes. That's what I thought. But even though we left late, we're still waiting. We even went to get gas, which y'all know how much I despise getting my own gas. And here we are. What is that? Why do you have duct tape? What, what? What's it duct tape for? Why do you have galaxy duct tape? Cause I do. Don't put that in the car, it'll ruin the leather. Duck, you know duct tape peels off your skin? It does? Yeah. It gives you burns. Like duct tape is so strong that if you put it on your skin for too long of a time, it peels off your skin and burns your skin. Yeah. So you better be careful and not You're mess up. You're in the vlog. Right? You're in the vlog right now. You're in the vlog right now with that amazing haircut. Y'all, I'm getting real good at these haircuts, let me tell you. Look at that. I just gave him a fresh cut on Wednesday? Tuesday. It's Sunday. Wednesday. Wednesday, maybe. And good news. Oh, you got good news? What's the good news? The new Gujetsu's coming out. The Two. new Gujetsu's are coming out. Jurassic World. Oh, boy. And then alien attack. And What's alien cares. attack? It's like space. It's space. Oh, aliens. Space Jam? No. Space Jam already came out. Oh. Yeah, it just, yes. And then it's going to be Alien, and then in October it's, it's going to be Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's Space Attack. Hey, Mateo, where are we going tomorrow? Bucky's! Bucky's. Bucky, Bucky, Bucky. Do you guys have kids that make like odd requests? Like when you want to reward them for something, they make like an odd request. When Daniel was little, like really little, we were trying to write a letter to Santa to ask oh, yeah. for what they wanted. Like, hey, if you've been good, what would you want Santa to do or bring you? What do you guys think Daniel will ask for? <laughs> you know, G, you know Doritos. <laughs> if you're an OG, you know the story. He was like, I just want Doritos. And I was like, well, you know, Santa sometimes gets us, you know, like a, a more special gift. He's like, Doritos? <laughs> um, hello? <laughs> Doritos. Do you still love Doritos or do you have a more, like a more delicious Doritos. Doritos! Cheetos is his now. No, remember I gave him too much cheese? <laughs> He's taking a break? No, I mean cheese He was like, Mom, you just, you're putting too much cheese in my lunchbox. I was like, what did I say? You're not, first of all, string cheese, goldfish cheet Cheetos, Cheez-Its are his favorite snacks. So I was, I didn't put all four of them in his lunchbox, but they're his favorite. So, you know, I put them in rotation and he was like, I'm, I'm tapped out on cheese, mom. It's like, oh, all right. Well, thanks, thanks for sharing the feedback. Management will take it into consideration. Hey, Matea, do you wanna tell everyone what's in your mouth right now? Uh, uh, an expander. Do any of you guys have experience with that? Like, have you had any, like, of your young kids dealing with an expander? We had his put in, Thursday? Last Thursday morning. So we've only turned the key once, but we gotta turn it three times a week. Mackie says it doesn't hurt. It just is annoying to have that thing in your mouth. I was like, same buddy, same. Now I'm all worse. I got all these bubbles and I, ugh. Whatever. Mine's worse. Whatever. Mine's worse. Whatever. I, I think yours is worse. Because if I'm like pissed or upset or it's like super uncomfortable, I can just take it out. You know, I just take it out. But I have those things cemented to my teeth, which that's not very comfortable. Ooh, let's see. What's happening? Oh, sh What happened? She's like, oh, we just deplaned. Keep in mind, they landed at 3.02. It's 3.40. They just deplaned and now they're waiting for their suitcases. And suitcases take like an hour. Mm-hmm. No, like 20 minutes. Well, it is kind of hot, so those poor guys are working outside, unloading all the suitcases. Hey, hey, what are you doing in the bike? <laughs> what are you doing in the bike? Why? Don't touch my bike. Don't touch my bike. Don't touch my bike. You know what, you guys? You know when you have one of those like proud mom moments where you're like, those are my kids. 
So I walked out of the bedroom. I was telling the kids, I was like, hey, we're gonna leave in five minutes. While I take the dogs to the potty, you guys get ready, put on your shoes, whatever. I walk out of the room. And both of the boys are like, did you get a new bag? <laughs> and I was like, I'm raising men. <laughs> and they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, listen, if you notice your girlfriend's nail polish, haircut, she got new glasses. Like if you notice, say something. Cause that is a beautiful quality to have. To just know your person exists and did something cool. You know, they noticed my bag. They and made me I feel like a million bucks. Yeah, and he was like, hey, we're gonna go wait in the car for you. I'm gonna take your purse. I was like, oh, my little mister. Mm, I love you. Okay, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he's like, I'm just gonna insert my coconut right here. I'm just gonna, just gonna put a big coconut in the way. Ew, you still smell like a baby. Do you guys still smell your babies? I mean, my kids are almost 10, almost seven, and I still, just take a little bit of a When I say goodnight to them at night, and I'm like, oh, okay, guys, goodnight. I'm gonna tuck you in. I just give them a little. <sighs> like a hit a baby. Just a hit a baby. <laughs> it's true. This is mom confession right now. Mom confession. Mom confession! Do you sniff your kids? I'm yes. just, I think I'm gonna leave you there. You know, just. I'm gonna leave you guys with that that profound thought. Think about it. Do you still, do you still sniff your kids? What did you find there? It doesn't even work. Oh, there's my first aid kit. Hey you guys, happy Monday. This is my sunscreen face. I have been using the sunscreen anytime we are outside for an extended period of time, and it's actually really awesome. It was only $11. I don't think that Cetaphil is cruelty free. It's an $11 drugstore, amazing facial sunscreen. It's SPF 50, and it's, it kind of reminds me of the La Roche-Posay Anthelios that was my favorite for a really long time that has like the beads inside. Anyway, my parents got home yesterday. We got caught up. You know what happens when you haven't seen your folks in a while and everyone's arriving, it's travel day, so we just caught up. But it is 12 o'clock and we just got back from Bucky's. I made this discovery. It was $19. <laughs> Look at the back. Isn't the back super cute? They have this print in all sizes, from baby bikinis to little boy trunks to grown-up trunks. I totally forgot to close off the vlog, to say goodbye to you guys, to thank you for watching, all of that jazz. I forgot to completely do the outro yesterday. So I'm here to say that if you guys were on the fence for Butcher Box, don't forget that the Surf and Turf Ribeyes and Lobster Tails promo is only going on for a short period of time. I'll have the date range in the description box below. So if you're gonna sign up and you wanna do it now, there will be a link there, but it's only for a short period of time. Everything else that you saw in this vlog, anywhere else that we went, anything that we did, I will make sure to list and link it as long as I can find it in the description box below. But for now, everyone else is waiting for me outside. We're just gonna go and have fun on this Monday. We just had breakfast at Bucky's. We're gonna enjoy the pool and, uh, and that's it. So I'll check in with you guys next weekend. We have a fun, a, like a super fun, family fun. All the kids are gonna be here. Uh, our godson's gonna be here, so it's gonna be a super fun weekend next weekend. But for now, it's gonna be a fun uh, Bucky's single piece, one piece? Bucky's one piece. Anyway, I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys.